Looking to make a positive change in his life, Matt and a friend decided their own business, Teaching Didgeridoo, was not only a step in the right direction to make that happen, but also a niche tourism opportunity in WA. Over the years, frequent reviews of their business plan have seen them identify new markets and sales opportunities to see them through the seasonal highs and lows of the tourism industry. This has resulted in their product diverse Fremantle based shopfront and popular online store you see today. As you will learn, Didgeridoo Breath have also made fantastic use of both social media and online video to not only increase product awareness, but also build a passionate audience around their brand. Started the business uh, back in 2002. Myself and a mate, we were both shirt and ties, fluoro lights, company cars, computers, and hating it, to be honest. And we were camping down at Gracetown Caravan Park and really just looking for something to do that was more satisfying, more fulfilling. And in, during the day, out having a surf, a paddle, a walk, and at night come back and we were playing the didgeridoo around the campfire. Um, that was one of the ideas we thought, imagine if you could spend time teaching people how to play this for a living. So that was the very first spark of the idea and um, over the next few weeks just kind of discussed it and evolved it and got a bit more serious about it and that's where the journey began. So as far as market research, probably a, a lot of it was our own wanting to learn more. So we had a CD, that, um, an instructional CD that taught us how to play. Um, so we were learning off that but then actually tried to investigate other, other sources to learn personally for ourselves. Um, so I looked around Perth and asked different stores and looked online and couldn't really find anywhere um, that would teach us how to play. So in, in sort of running into a brick wall there, we thought, oh, that's a good opportunity to uh, provide a, a service. When we first started, sure didn't picture where we are now. Um, but had a really clear vision that the business would be all about teaching how to play didgeridoo. So anyone from this big to, to this big, we would happily teach them how to play. Um, it's a really easy instrument to learn and, and to get onto and really quite a lot of fun. So that, that was from the very beginning our passion and, and still is today. The actual look and feel of the business is way different and, and evolved um, over the years, but the core purpose is the same. Um, as far as reviewing our business over the years, we have done informally probably to begin with and over the last few years a little more formally. Uh, we've got two different strategies, one for online and one for in-store. Uh, particularly the last few years when things have got a lot tougher in the retail climate, in-store, uh, a lot of our strategies more into product diversification, so looking at our existing customer base, looking at what else they would possibly want from us and then offering those products as a way to maintain and increase sales. Top tips for anyone going into a business, you're obviously going into it for a reason, you're passionate about it, um, which really helps. And I guess my biggest tip would be just do it way better than anyone else is doing it out there, because that's what's gonna set you apart from the competition. And if you genuinely love it and passionate about it, then that's quite easy. Another great tip is a brand and it feels like sort of something that your bigger companies do and your corporates do. It's actually one thing that's given us major advantage and we've only really had a brand for the last few years. So our first seven odd years of business was um, me doing up a logo and someone else doing up a letterhead and every time we'd print a new brochure or it'd be whatever flavor we felt on the day. And in the end, it was just a bit of a mismatch and it didn't really look uh, professional but it didn't look strong um, so about three years ago we went through a branding exercise so we had a graphic designer come in and uh, basically just do up a, a logo and a bit of a style guide and a set of rules to to work within and and that we rolled out across in store and online and um, all of our print marketing and that's when I guess the look and the feel of our business got much much stronger and customers really loved that Video is a major part of our online strategy, our online business, um, and the biggest reason is our customers love it. So there's all sorts of activities going on in the store. Any one day there might be a 
jam session or drums or singing, whatever's going on, we'll bring out the little video camera and film it and put it up on YouTube and our customers around the world really love it. So it builds a community, it builds trust because people can see the personality of the business. Um, it builds trust because people see that we're a real business, especially when going online um, there is a real trust issue because you're not really sure if the, build, if the business exists or whereabouts they are. So to see real people with real walls and didgeridoos and having a blast and personality, then our customers really bond with that. So when it comes to buying a didgeridoo online, they're not hesitant at all. As far as the YouTube videos, um, there's two other really major benefits. We use them for product demonstrations. So of our instruments, we'll actually film them being played and, and we can talk about them and put them online. That's just fascinating. You can't write that in a, in a paragraph that's as important to customers. Um, and another big win, which often isn't a focus for small businesses, is the search engines. Um, we'll actually rank videos as well. So often now, if you type in a search term for anything, if there's a video relevant to that, Google will rank it up in the search results. So we get a lot of our traffic to the website purely through the videos. Facebook is a really important part of our strategy and, and we use it heavily. Over the last 18 months since the Facebook business page function came out, we've built our Facebook fans to about 7,500. So that's a massive customer base that you can market to instantly and freely. And so that's great reach for, I guess, new product launches and, and things of value. What's really important with social media is that you give your customers something of value, not just saying, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, because that doesn't really work on that platform. So it's finding out what your customers value and like from you and then giving that to them. In our case, our customers love playing tips, um, instructions, um, in-store jams and concerts, performances. They love that stuff. So we make sure that's what goes on the Facebook page. So tips for people going into the tourism industry, there's a couple of main factors. Obviously tourism is normally seasonal, uh, so you just want to think about the big picture, how your business is going to roll out the busy and quiet times. Winter time, foot traffic is down, uh, but with our online business, uh, which we sell products around the world, that's consistent all year round. So financially that really helps our business um, through the seasonal times or the off season. Um, and more importantly, and this is the same for any business, is really identifying what your customers want from you. So we'll all have this grand plan of what we want to sell to the world. And then you really want to find out the people that are interested in that product. What are they really interested in and how do they want to see it, feel it, buy it, experience it? And then package up your service or product exactly the way they want it, um, which, which is going to provide a better service.